Here we go. It's happening. It's happening. It's happening. And we are live. It is, it is, this is the moment. This is the moment, Peter. I've been really excited about this one. I keep saying, I've started saying that a lot, but I think the, there's two different... Sorry, obviously I'm going to introduce you properly, but just to let people come in, I'm just going to say that, um, you know, that these two days are actually... And I didn't sort of exactly plan it this way, but the two days are quite... Um, the two days are quite different because there's a lot of... This day has a lot of sort of, I don't know how to explain it, but obviously we've had like interviews and Q&As and, and panels yesterday, but this th there's some very sort of active things going on. You know, we had sketching, we've got someone doing live design, we've got you giving us a tour of the studio, you know, there, there's some, I think there's more dynamic things going on. Um, so, they're, so they're quite different in that, they, you know, they've got their own merits. So, um, and we've been really enjoying today so far. We had, uh, you watched a little oh, bit of, it's yep, really nice that, that you've been Andrew, watching. Both great. Um, isn't, isn't Matt lovely? People have been yes. saying how lovely Matt is. They'd never heard from him before. They'd heard yeah. of him, but not from him. And um, and yeah, it's been uh, it's uh, it's been great to see him get a get a get a response. Davy B it's is in one. saying hello. We're, we're starting to get comments in. People, make yourselves known in the comments. Um, that's always good. Um, Peter is here, streaming from. So where are you, Peter? Where are Vienna. you? You're in Vienna. Yeah. Yep. And uh, and is this a new studio or just uh, or just your? It is a new studio. So you're, yep. you're, so you're flashing yep. off the new studio. Well, you know, I've been doing nothing else for the last two weeks uh, other than just moving into this studio, and it's been complete chaos. And uh, I don't think I could have managed to do anything much else. Um, and yeah, this is you know this is where my head's been at for the last couple of weeks. So I figured I'd uh, just show people around. And I know I personally I I love to see artists' studios and how they work and. Uh, that doesn't that doesn't happen that often that you get to tour a studio and I would imagine especially as an as an art collector if you're not an artist yourself it might be it's either doubly interesting or the opposite I'm not sure but uh, let's try it we've got we've got people coming in we've got Andrew Swainson's in the room already after his Andrew? sketching I don't know Andrew if you're still drawing whilst watching this uh, let us know um, Oh, so I've got a comment from Davy B. I think that's Davy Bowden. So I'm, I'm, I'm going to assume he says, "Gareth, you are a legend for all this, learning so much about what makes people tick." Yeah, it's, I think this is uh, obviously I've said we've said off just off uh, camera about the um, you know on on Facebook the name of the convention is Amp Jam Poster Convention and Social, and having that sort of social aspect, trying to make things very organic in terms of the conversations we're having and, and you know, getting people to... We're seeing, we, we've been seeing people actually have converse, conversations in the, even in the comments. So there's this shared yeah. experience stuff, which is really nice. And, and I think that's one of those things that conventions should be about. So we've got lots of comments yeah. coming in. There's a little delay between when I say something and when we start getting comments yeah. in. So we've got Matt yeah. Griffin is here. Peter is nicer than me, yeah. he says. Um, me. We've got, he said, <laughs> Matt Griffin has come in and said, Peter is nicer than me. Because I said that he's nice, oh, and Peter so. says he's nicer than... Yeah, well, that's, that's what we're seeing. Um, he, he and I could have this conversation where we say, no, you're nicer, no, you're nicer. <laughs> yeah, well, maybe, we, maybe we'll set that up. Maybe we'll set up a... One of the things that we were looking at, maybe something we wanted to do is, uh, is have um, artists interview artists and stuff like that. That could be cool in the future. Yeah. We'll, see, we'll see what happens sure. with that. Um, and we've got Alan Campbell in. We've got uh, Stacey Langdown. She's been watching. She, Stacey Langdown told us that she'd be uh, that basically uh, the family had set up with it with uh, Amp Jam on the TV, I believe, with um, with just a load of snacks, and they were just 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 pigging out and watching and watching Amp Jam for the weekend. So that's good, isn't I'm it? I'm on television. I'm fine. You're on television. television. You can say you can say hi, Mum. I'm on TV. You know that sort of thing. You know. Um, <laughs> Uh, Ian Fraser, I met Pete last year at Thought Bubble alongside the Black Dragon Press guys. I can confirm, extremely nice. I uh, can echo that. He is extremely nice, having having met him last year, and we uh, and we socialised over um, over my Groot statue, my uh, my Groot uh, figure. I bought one of those for and my you, son. You bought one of those from your son. <laughs> yeah, you bought one of those for your son, uh, and. Um, uh, there's some very interesting. We'll, we'll we'll share the photos that each of uh, had a number of artists at Thought Bubble last year take photos with with uh, with Baby Groot uh, in different amusing sort of situations. Um, you know, and uh, Andrew Swainson, for example, uh, had um, I believe had. 
group poke him in the eye and all sorts. There was all sorts going on. Um, your one is also very, is, is very good. Um, so I'll, I'll share that some of those in uh, on, on the Twitter account. Um, Peter, thank you for joining us. Um, thank you. And uh, I wonder if... Uh, I think one of the things... You, you have a very unique style. Um, and uh, one of the things for me that, that sets you... I mean, if I said set to a party, it would turn out that, that there were other artists who do the same thing. But the, the, your, the mythology element of your work, you know, your love of mythology and stuff, you know, so many people have, you know, some of the pieces that, that people have gone, oh, that's amazing, have linked actually to a myth rather than, you know, a film. But, you know, films are modern day myths, that sort of thing. But, um, yep. but do you, so where does that love of, of mythology come from? Um, I'm not sure I could tell you where it comes from. Um, but, you know, I've had it since I was a kid. And the reason it's in my work is that uh, for a long time, I, for probably the last 10 years at least, one of my big uh, central focuses in, in my work and deciding what to do and what not to do has been trying to make the work as personal as possible. Um, obviously, there's, there's always, uh, you know, as a commercial artist, you, you're always working with other people's needs as well and solving problems for other people and, and so on. But bringing it as much back to what I care about, um, I think is what results in my best work because, you know, there's more passion in it. And at some point I, I decided to start looking back at and, and thinking, okay, what are the things that not only do I love now, but that I can't remember ever not loving. And, um, one of those is mythology. And there's actually a number of different uh, threads that tie back to mythology and particularly uh, British um, mythology and uh, British literature, ancient literature, and so on. Um, and I won't get into all of it because it's it's a, it's a bit uh, it probably put people to sleep. But um, <laughs> you know, you you said you mentioned Bla the Black Dragon Press table. The guy I was sitting next to was Nico. And Nico's Nico's uh, an incredible, uh, yeah, incredible and artist. Yeah, Nico has Nico, a, Nico, come on the show. <laughs> he's yeah, he's. I mean, he's one of my favorite artists for one thing, but um, he also has a similar. He's also in a similar position to me in that um, I think the pop culture that artists like us are most interested in is ancient pop culture. Um, you know, so uh, Black Dragon Press, we we did that that uh, Gawain and the Green Knight. Uh, print and you know and all of that all of that really old stuff um which to me is just like ancient superhero comics and and whatever um opera i mean it isn't really ancient but you know the nibelungen we did as well yeah um, yeah that's just kind of my thing and uh i'm not exactly sure why it's my thing but i've accepted it and uh embraced it and i think it results in, in my best stuff it's um yeah it's it's incredible because I, I think to begin with i mean I, when did you do your first film print? Because what I'd seen primarily was, and you said Nibelung. I'm sorry, my pronunciation is going to be absolutely right. terrible. Yeah. That one. Um, <laughs> I'll get it. I'll get it sometime. Sometime. But um, that was probably. I think that was maybe the first print I saw from you. But oh no, perhaps, perhaps. Um, and I still need to get one, which is ridiculous. But uh, the um, uh, piece for Sleepy Hollow. Is, I'd seen that, and obviously that's been a film, but it's probably not what you were making. <laughs> yeah, well, um, the first film print that I did was the fourth print that I did. I guess I still haven't done that many. Um, no, no, this is the thing. Like, it's, like... it's all. It's only been. It's only been really this year that I've been um, really kind of making this my focus. Um, but the first three prints were 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 based on books. Um, those that was uh, Watership Down for Black Dragon Press, Wind in the Willows for Black Dragon Press, and which uh, both of those have been films, obviously, but mm -hmm. for licensing reasons, we, we use the books. And then Sleepy Hollow. Um, and as much as, you know, Sleepy Hollow has had some, some good film versions, um, none of them touch, for me, just the original short story. Um, there's nothing quite like it. And also for licensing reasons, it's just easier. So those were really uh, literary prints. Oh yeah, they're way out of date. For, love, for, I would for love right. to do more of that. I would love to do more of that. I, I, 
I'm much less knowledgeable in film than a lot of the artists in this in this scene. Um, that's changing slowly, but yeah. It's, it, it seems like you're like there's a there's a there's a wind at your back at the moment. It seems that way uh, in terms of obviously you had two great prints come out, um, and I, I don't know if you've got some sketches to show us of that stuff, but but uh, the two great prints come out. Uh, this week was it this week this week has Last been week, yeah. this week has felt like a month for me because i've got just gotten i've just been active just You're every minute every working every minute of the day uh but um the um you know teenage mutant ninja turtles which had been teased a while back and james hobson was talking to me saying i really can't wait for that to come out and then it came <laughs> and then it came out the next week yeah. um he said i can't wait to see it and yeah it is it is a very um uh kinetic Piece. there's a lot of there's a, there's a movement there which is which is really exciting and and then and then with the watchman piece um with dr manhattan it's it's so it's more sort of it's a completely different feel you know they were two very uh there's two very different pieces in terms of the i suppose the vibe you get from them yeah um, would you be able to? Tell, I mean, I'm not necessarily. You might you might discuss a little bit of your, but yeah, are, are those pieces that have been hanging around for a while, or is it is it is it stuff that you've done this year, or? I did. Yeah, I did them. I did them this year. The, the, pretty much the first thing I did this year was um, was write to Joe at uh, Bottleneck and just say, hey, you know, it would be fun to do something, and uh, you know, they they have that that turtles release and he said yeah we you know what are you interested in and i said well let's do some ninja turtles i mean i love the ninja turtles i've loved them since i was a kid and uh modern day myths having, <laughs> with, well yeah i mean it's brilliant it's absolutely <laughs> genius isn't it I, to take such a ridiculous idea it just totally absurd and make it into this legendary uh multi-generational influential property um, yeah, i think the uh, the fascinating thing about about um about teenage mutant ninja Turtles, and i'm not a ma i'm not personally not a massive fan i used to love it a lot as a kid but one of the things that's fascinating and i only became aware of this from have you i don't know if you're familiar with the netflix documentary the toys that made us but there is a great the episode on teenage mutant ninja turtles is excellent even though i'm yes. not a massive teenage mutant ninja turtles fan it's great but it's they've had these sort of reboots which which have had to varying success but that has created different generations that are fans and so it yeah. is very cross-generational uh, there's this cross-generation generation appeal that starts from what was it the start of the 90s or the late 80s um, yeah late 80s yeah late 80s um and then uh, is watchmen a, a thing that you enjoy I, I the series i know is is the new series is very popular but i haven't i haven't seen it i i haven't seen it either and and again for me it's well it, yeah, I was going to say, for me, it's almost always the original source that is my sure. primary interest. Alan uh, Moore? But, but Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles is the exception to that because I, you know, I'm aware of the original comics and I saw the original comics when I was young and thought they were cool. But the thing that, that, uh, that nested in my brain for the rest of my life was the cartoon, so, which isn't really the original form. But uh, yeah, with Watchmen, I, I was thinking about the, the book. The book, more than yeah, yeah, yeah. Else. And it was it was a bit of an editorial kind of illustration in a sense because I wasn't looking at any particular aspect of the narrative um, of Doctor Manhattan or the Watchmen. It's the, more the essence of him, right? Concept, yeah. I, because he has like kind of two things going on, which are in a sense contradictory. One is a sort of a religious aspect because he's basically God, or as close as you're going to get to it. Um, but then he's also a product of science, which is a fascinating uh, sort of contradiction. And so I wanted to play with those two things. So it's really conceptual. It's not really got anything to do with any given uh, instance of Dr. Manhattan, just sort of the concept itself. So. But it feeds into that sort of more, and this, this chimes in really nicely with the print that you've got releasing today, which, which I saw at Thought Bubble. I don't know if you had it on a, on a business card or, what, what, yeah. or how I saw it, but... And that would be why. And I said that that looks like a flaming lips poster. But you're, there's there's whilst there is this sort of there's part of your style really feeds into this sort of ancient like mythology aspect. But then there's also something uh, there's an area of your work that's incredibly psychedelic. 
yeah, right. and and that Watchmen yeah, thing is very psychedelic. And and this piece that you've got coming out uh, today uh, is incredibly psychedelic. And I need to buy that for. I think it might be the. I I, I can sort of allow myself one purchase um, from from the from the stuff that's coming out um, uh, this month from from the convention that I'm running. But um, <laughs> but uh, I, I think it's going to be that. that. <laughs> yeah, I am paying to run it. Yeah, um, fortune. Uh, but. Um, uh, yeah, the, the 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 foil for that because I because I saw it a year ago and and, I, and it wasn't a print and I, and I wanted it so much but um uh, we'll um I think we've got pictures of it that we'll show later have we got pictures that we'll show yeah, a bit later I'm, but I'm we'll show you the uh, I'm going to show you the the printer's proof uh, oh, they just cool. finished they just finished the prints this morning uh, and oh, I've awesome. seen photos of them and they look amazing but I've also got a a, a printer's proof that I'm going to show uh, at the end here awesome so, yeah it's uh, it's an incredible piece but. Uh, yeah, the, that psychedelic. Where does that come from? The, the your 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 you know the psychedelic element of your work. Does it come? Uh, from, I'm not asking. Do you do drugs? Uh, you don't have to admit now. One blink uh, once for yes, two for no. Um, no, it's it's fine. But but do you get what I, I just, just? It's it's fascinating to see, um, especially because yeah. the, because the psychedelic. I, I'll I'll bring. I, I won't. Uh, we won't go there. But what I'm saying is, is that um, the. That mythology stuff ha- is 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 ancient, whereas that sort of psychedelic thing for me is yeah. 60s earliest, maybe maybe sure. a bit before. So those two yeah. very different uh, approaches and seeing yeah. them mash together um, yep. is uh, is so it's it's just it's great juxtaposition, I guess. Yeah, well, it's it's synthetic, really. Um, I think a lot of problem solving in 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 answering a brief at least and my, and my background is more editorial over the last few years it's almost always some kind of a contradiction or conflict between two maybe in a narrative uh situation it might be a conflict between two characters in a conceptual uh context it's a it's a conflict or a tension between two ideas mm-hmm. and when it comes to what you're talking about now i mean my, my interest thematically is is ancient and I'm a big history nerd and all that, but you know I do live in the 21st century, and I'm, I'm certainly not interested in just trying to imitate ancient art styles or anything. Um, I definitely like to think that my art is is of its time, um, and you know psychedelic artwork is amazing as well and has influenced me a lot. Japanese artwork has influenced me massively, um, and a lot of other things. Um, but yeah, you, you, the, the psychedelic aspect is is also just a lot of fun. Yeah. Do you, do you uh, just for the record? Uh, uh, we're talking about psychedelic. I'm wearing a tie dye t shirt. Um, you notice Lithuanian skeleton basketball tie dye. That's amazing. Do you know? Do you know? Do you know the story behind this t shirt? No idea. Okay. Very very briefly, I'll give you 20 seconds on it. Okay. So in uh, in 1992, so 1991, Lithuania gained its independence from from uh, the Soviet Union, um, and the in 1988, the basketball team. Um, of uh, of uh, of the USSR uh, won the Olympics, but four of the starting five were Lithuanian. So Lithuania basically won the gold in 1988, right. and then in 1992 it was their opportunity to be, you know, a, uh, a this is us, this is Lithuania. We've been you've been thinking that we're Russia and we're not basically, um, and they had like no money, and the Grateful Dead found out about about the, their plight, <laughs> and sent them these T-shirts. So this is a this is this is from the artist. It's not an original because an original goes for three four hundred quid. But um, you know, uh, so he sent them sent them a check, sent them, and then they won bronze. They won bronze, and that wow. that, that bronze no ma- that bronze medal uh, match um, was against Russia. So there you go. So beautiful. That's amazing. I had no idea. Thank you. So there that. you go. There is a little history lesson. There is a great documentary that you can find called The Other Dream Team on YouTube. And that's the only tangent I'm going to go off on today. Right. So uh, I think it'd be great to get to this to the studio tour. Is that something sure. you'd like to do now? We're, we're, yep. we're, we've, yep. we've been chatting for like 20 minutes. So yeah, um, sounds good. So, yeah, uh, let's let's see. Let's see what you've got going on there. OK, so I, I, I have a selfie stick. Wow. Imagine that. See, I really am a man of the 21st century. So we're just so, adjusting now to make sure that we can see everything. <clears throat> so just give us a second. Your feet. He's going. Here he is. So let me see here. I'm going to switch this. Hold on. Okay. Whoa, there's my sink. Lovely. Let me see here. 
Okay. You see that? Okay. Yeah, we're just uh, we're just making sure the framing's all right. So just give us a second. Sure. Yeah, no worries. So some of this stuff has to be done on the fly because lots of people have got different devices with different dimensions and everything. So this is just oh, a wow. virtue of live streaming. But we are good to go. We can see everything. Um, I can go quiet for a minute if you want to do it self-guided. Yeah. Why don't you yeah? just uh, let me? I'll I'll, t I'll take a, I'll take a, I'll take a little break. I'll be listening. Sure. So. Yeah, I used to have a little uh, street level place here in Vienna. And um, the big thing that I've gained now in this new space is is basically all up top here. This These high ceilings are just such a boon because uh, for me, I realized at some point that my workspace and my headspace are kind of the same space. And the more I treat my studio as a reflection of my, my brain, uh, the better things tend to work. And the more space I've got in the studio, the more space I feel I have uh, creatively as well. So that's been huge. And I actually build in a pretty large amount of just open space here because a big part of the problem solving uh, process for me is, is pacing. <laughs> when I'm really uh, wrestling with an idea, I just kind of walk around in circles and uh, get it figured out. So I need to have some empty space there. And naturally, taller ceilings is taller windows and these things are absolutely glorious. Uh, this is north facing light. I don't know how many of you are artists and most of the artists in this scene I think are by and large digital artists. So this aspect won't matter to them, but this is north light. And if you're drawing, painting on paper, north light is the best light you can get because it's even throughout the day. So I'm loving this, this is fantastic. Uh, his Which signal will come the back. Best there he is. 40 bucks I have ever spent in my life. What was the best forty bucks you ever spent in your entire so life? So the signal just went for a, like three seconds. Nope. This gargantuan table here. This is huge. Oh, right. I don't know if you really appreciate how big this thing is uh, on the screen, but it's huge. And uh, yeah, it's been absolutely amazing. I can really spread out, and I've tended to be drawing larger and larger, especially now that everybody wants 24 by 36. I kind of <laughs> need a huge table. And yeah, there is a digital aspect, obviously. So I, you know, I do have a computer, and I do use it. Uh, the record player here is fairly essential equipment as well. And you know, I know a lot of the people watching are collectors, so I figured I might show a few of the things that I've got up as well. Um, I really am not good at hanging pictures, framing, all of that business. But I just finished this one up the other day. This is probably my favorite thing that I have is a James Jean Max Pipe. And besides just being generally slightly obsessed with James Jean, I do love uh, all the embellishments on this thing because these days, you know, we see everything on our screens pretty much. Just about everything that we absorb artistically is on a cell phone. And the beautiful thing about print is that it does things that nothing else can. And, you know, you talk about emboss, embossing, hot foils, gloss, all that kind of stuff is uh, fantastic. And I've got a, a local boy here, Egon Schiele, points if you know who that is. Uh, classic Viennese artist, Alphonse Mucha. And uh, this is an architectural plan from uh, uh, Otto Wagner, who's also a, a classic Viennese architect. And down here, I haven't put this one up yet, but this is a guy who I think would be absolutely destroying alternative movie posters, but I've never seen him do one. And this is uh, Sam Weber. He used to do mostly... Uh, editorial illustration and this is a this is a poster for the uh, society of illustrators uh, 53rd annual show and he, he just kicks ass he does uh, mostly covers now for fantasy and sci science fiction he did a brilliant edition of dune for the folio society and then there's the bookshelves uh, this is kind of really really mission critical stuff the book We just lost your signal for just a minute there. You, you, you'll be back. We lost you just for like five seconds just seeing it. Uh, no worries. Yeah, so basically I'm just saying, you know, these, these books, I lean on them pretty heavily. This J.C. Leyendecker book uh, saved me when I was working on um, The Thin Red Line for Mondo. 
that was just one of his pieces broke open the composition problems I was having. These here are the Japanese and uh, Japanese influence books, which is, you know, this is kind of my happy place. There's uh, Yuko Shimizu in here. There's uh, Tomer Hanuka. There's um, James Jean, Yoshitaka Amano, and a whole bunch of other things. Kuniyoshi, probably my favorite artist of all time. I've been reading this one uh, for my Fritz Lang series for, um, for Black Dragon Press, which I hope to be continuing in the fall. And then a few shelves of uh, Arthurian legend nerdery, because, uh, yeah, I'm that kind of guy. And last but not least, a relic, <laughs> a relic from a previous life, uh, my guitar. I used to be a pretty serious musician. I don't know if I was any good, but I was serious about it. <laughs> Same. <laughs> <laughs> Couldn't commit to it, so now it's a hobby, unfortunately. And uh, then we've got a full-length mirror here for when I need to study poses or whatnot. Yeah, and the flat files, of course. That's about it. Hello. There. I, I took that when you said that's about it. I took that as the cue to uh, to, to chat to you again. <clears throat> um, lot of comments coming in. By the way, uh, Ian Griffin's uh, Ian uh, Fraser possibly has the uh, best comment of the convention so far. It said, um, "It said uh, best thing about Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles is that they wear masks to hide their identity." Um, <laughs> That was that was strong, Ian. Good. That was and and I you know I see you in the comments, but in in the comments on on uh, on on Facebook and stuff, and obviously we've met and whatever. But that's 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 the funniest thing I've seen you say. By that's just just brilliant. Um, uh, Matt Griffin uh, giving you a lot of love, um, discussing some of the stuff you know discussing some of the stuff you you covered there. S said Sam Webb was uh, amazing and um, and. Uh, Oh, he he also pointed out me saying, you know, okay, so yes, I, I, he said the ancients took way more psychedelics than anyone in the sixties managed. That is true. Um, <laughs> <Could be. laughs> that is meant true. To or not is another thing. Well, whether they meant to or not, but I, I meant psychedelic in terms of a you know a, a you know a, a theme rather than than an experience. Maybe it's always both. Who knows? Um, yeah. Uh, so. In terms of the, we, you've got some sketches uh, that you're going to show. Do you want to? Do you want to show any? Do you want to show any on the camera or just from what we've got well, here? Well, um, I I gave you a few files. Yeah, we've got some. We've got. We'll show some files. Oh, in case you need them. So you want to? Do you want to show some some stuff? Yeah. I said some I... stuff. I turned into Sean Connery there. Some stuff. Anyway, uh, oh, you I go ahead. Do more than that to turn into Sean Connery. Oh, no. Don't lie to yourself. <laughs> Uh, no matter We're how all hard I try. We're a long way away from Sean Connery. I'm that's afraid. that's true. Um, yeah, I just wanted to show uh, basically the steps in in how I make a piece because uh, I think it's it's possibly a little different from from what a lot of people are doing because um, it uses up so much paper. But yeah, uh, so I've, I've got a few things here. Uh, let me just see what if we can get a good angle. I might have to adjust this a little bit to make things work. Let's see. So I just wanted to show kind of a start to finish situation for the Gawain and the Green Knight print that I did for Black Dragon Press. And it starts in these. I buy stacks of these cheap uh, sketchbooks and I, and I fill them up. And it's nice to have a record of all the things I've been doing over the years. I started using these about two years ago. And uh, yeah, this is the number three in the posters dedicated sketchbooks. There's a fourth one that I'm already on. And yeah, it's a lot of it looks, you know, it looks like noise to the uh, to brains other than my own. But these things always start out uh, with text, and I don't expect you to be able to read this here. But I always start by taking notes. Um, you know, if there's a movie to watch, I'll watch the movie. If there's a primary kind of conflict or concept, I'll take notes on that and just try and get solid on what I think about it and what I'm trying to do. Now. Is this visible at all? I can see it. I don't know what about other people. I do, I do, do let us know if, if you want me to okay. if you want me to go away, guys. <laughs> not, not completely, but it's in visually so that you get a full screen of, of what he's showing us. Let, let just uh, just pop it in the comments. But I can see that stuff that you're showing us. I can see, you know, oh. that there's that there's ink on the page. Okay. Yeah. 
So, you know, this is also partly a scrapbook because a lot of the uh, sketching I did was on the subway in a smaller notebook. And I just end up, I, I paste everything in here. Like I say, I like to have a record and be able to see everything. And for this one, this is, uh, this topic or the, the, the story is so close to my heart and I wanted to do, I wanted to do it justice. So I went through just a thousand different ideas. And the ones that I thought were viable got a red X at some point. <laughs> And uh, I don't know if you, I don't know if you can see these very well, but uh, but we can always we can we can share some other photos if you if you want to take any individual photos we can always tweet them and or, or put them in. The, uh, but there's people, no photos of these ones. We'll we'll just we'll just skim over them. But, but was, people people are saying that they can see and that, that it looks great. Okay, excellent. We've Good. got multiple people saying that. And a lot of them had had a lot more framing than I ended up using. This is a good example of, of a much more formal, um, symmetrical composition that I was using a lot. I was leaning towards it. But in the end, the, the, the story itself is so shambolic and crazy that I figured something a little looser was necessary. And in the end, it was actually this that won the day. And it looks probably the worst of them all. But it had something of a tree in it. There was something very sort of plant-like in the shape. And at this stage, I'm really worrying about shapes more than anything else. Um, and you know, the green knight is sort of related to the green man concept. It's very, uh, you know, implies nature and whatever. So I thought, okay, a tree is good, but I didn't, I didn't realize that that was what I was going to go with. So I kept doing a lot of other things, trying to get a good pose for the figure here, trying to have a sense that he was weighed down by this enormous ax. Tried a lot of other different things. I was really reaching. I didn't know what to do anymore at that point. <laughs> but like I said, in the end, I did come back to that one sketch. And this is really the thing that unlocked it here, though, is this character, the Green Knight, is a, is a smart ass. And there's, a, there's an aspect of humor and arrogance throughout the whole story and smugness in his character that I, I didn't realize I needed to get that across, but once I sketched this, I realized that that was really important. And having, having that sort of expression, you know, with the, with the hand on the chin, which doubles as him holding up his own severed head, was too good. <laughs> so I knew I had to work that in, and um, eventually I came back to that scribble that I showed you, and. This is one you can show a JPEG of. That we'll, we'll, we'll put those up. So this, this you've obviously shown us here. This is all for one poster, right? This is all for the one poster. Yeah. So we've obviously seen a lot of we've seen a lot of sketches there, and we've seen a lot of and you know from from very very rough to 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 quite you know some you know some uh, some sort of character study there with the you know with the head and in the hand. What what, how, what time does this process take? What, what you know that we're seeing here. It varies. It varies wildly. It's, it's hard to answer because partly it does vary a lot from project to project. And it also is difficult to answer because my sense of time disappears entirely. Um, and it, it's not it's not very active to begin with. I'm, I tend to get lost in things. But this one, all of these sketches, I mean, I certainly <coughs> was picking at it over the course of at least a week, but not exclusively. You know, there were other things going on. Um, but I don't, you know, I don't mind spending a few days on sketches if I have the time. Uh, if I don't have the time, it's obviously got to be a lot quicker. And, you know, sometimes I'll sit down and I'll get my idea within an hour or two. But then it's the rest of it that really takes a long time. And I'll, uh, I'll show you that. Is that, have you, have you put that sketch up? Can so we put, we put the sketch up. Do you, do you want it, would you want it back up? I don't know. Do people, no, no, people no, want, you don't need if, to put it back up. I just don't know when, it, when it's up. And sure, when it's no, not, no, so. yeah. I, I, I'll, I'll uh, let you know when different things are up because we've got okay. four different images. So we put up that one that's got, that's sort of in a, in a pinkish or orangish pencil. Yep. Yeah. That's, so that's, yeah. So that's, that's, that's been good. seen. Yeah. Okay. So you don't need to have that up anymore. Um, I went from that one. I blew it up. And I'll show you in a second what I mean by blowing it up. But I blew it up and started working on pencils. Um, and I worked on it large because, and this is one of the reasons why I stick, one of many reasons why I stick with analog, is that the way I draw is very much um, contingent on the, the way that I move my hand when I'm drawing. And, and drawing digitally, unless I had an enormous Cintiq, um, it's it's very restrictive in that sense. But this was really not working. This just was not even close to good enough. Um, the the negative space was not happening the way I wanted it to. And this this all in here was awkward. 
Um, I wanted Gawain to have his own space and to be more dominated. And getting a getting a, a, a God, I got a German word in my head for it, but getting the, a, a sort of a, a vector of <laughs> a sight line, I guess is the word, between that head and this one down here was really important, and this was not really happening here. So I went back to digital. Um, I got my Procreate out. And the advantage there is obviously undos and uh, the way that you can mock something up really quickly and try 10 different versions of it. And sketch to that file, if you put that up, um, is what I came out with. And is that up? Mm -hmm. Yeah, so that's, you can see that that's, that's essentially just shapes. And, and any of you who are familiar with concept art will probably have seen character studies that people do essentially in black so that you're only really looking at the silhouette. And that was really important because those shapes needed to work for the whole page design to happen. And I was really happy with where I got with that. And then I blew it up. And this is my very silly old school way of blowing it up. I just made four A4 prints and taped them together. Nice. And DIY I, is the best way. <laughs> yeah, it works. And uh, yeah, I put that on the light box and do the pencils over top of that. And the pencil drawing, normally I keep that, um, partly for economic reasons because I can sell it later, but also because they have their own character and I like to keep them. I don't have the pencil drawing for that one anymore though. I think I must have inked directly over it in this case, which is an exception. But I did give you that file. Um, that is the yeah, we'll get that up. pencil scan image. Yeah, that's the one. So this poster, like, I swear that there's, <laughs> I see a, in the in the final, I see a likeness between the the the, the face at the bottom. I see a likeness between. Th there's there's a bit of you in there. Is that? It's entirely. It entirely. is. It's right, me, good. It's good. Because that's not me being offensive or anything like that. <laughs> that happens a lot. I you know, if I, if, for some expressions, you know, I really need a model and, um, to 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 render the, the light and shadow in the face and the hands the way that I like to, it really, really helps to have a photo to work from. And yeah, I mean, there's a face. Yeah, I, I'm, glad, I'm glad that I was right about that. I, it, was, it, was, uh, it was lovely to, to imagine that I had hair again. Um, uh, Alan Campbell says, uh, who's, a, who's an amazing artist in his own right, he, uh, he uh, says, uh, yep, I do these digital A4 prints taped together. So he, he does the exact same thing. Yep. Why buy a bigger printer? Yeah, it's too expensive. So yeah, I, I suppose the people can see that that drawing by now. Um, but that's... people can always go back and watch, you know, and and yeah, go to that point. So we, we've got them up for a brief period of time, and because yeah. we'd want to give you the stage and that sort of thing. Sure, oh, that's perfect. And from there, uh, it's this is where all the fun really happens. This is the 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 original painting, so to speak, which is. A black ink drawing with brushes, acrylic inks, and uh, sepia tone washes. And I have my reasons for painting that way that are sort of technical and partly secret. But um, this also gives me an, an actual original that you can hold in your hand, um, that I can exhibit, that I can sell. Um, and there's a sort of a mental health aspect uh, for me. I realized okay. a few years ago that. Um, the digital thing, if, if I'm spending a full day in Photoshop, I'm robbing myself of a, a sort of a physical experience or a, I don't know if it's primarily physical, but I'm robbing myself of a lot of the benefits that art brings me, which is to make me feel that I'm in the right place, doing the right thing, that I'm connected to the results of what I'm doing. And I think it's very tied to the physical process. And so I, it's, it's just not good for me. If I, if I spend a lot of time in Photoshop, um, I come out of it without satisfaction and happiness that I get from, uh, from drawing like this. And that's very therapeutic. And I'm, I'm much healthier mentally when I work like this. I totally get that. I am um, as a, as a, I'm not, as a, as a song, as a songwriter, I, I, it's pen and paper as a, and you know, rather than rather than typing it in, so for some reason that that connection with, yep. um, you know, that it's flowing from your own hand, sort of thing as well, and you know that it is, you know, creation 
and whatever is uh, yeah matt griffin says wow about that sketch uh, about that not the sketch about the about this uh, original don't call and this a sketch <laughs> no i'm not calling it a sketch that's why i corrected myself it. it is not a sketch it is way beyond that i i know that i know that i know that <laughs> no i was just i was just messing with you no um, um but also year, just that i'm oh, sorry you go i'll just say this year <clears throat> you see this part in the final print all the sepia stuff gets recolored but these heads and hands um, are, are left alone as they are. There may be, you know, contrast bumped up or something like that, but those stay as they are. I like that to be by hand. And is it also, is it also quite fulfilling in terms of, you know, a lot of artists create their, you know, they, they do create their posters within um, and their art prints within a computer. And, you know, if you're trying to get approval on something, it could be, it could be years before you see that digital thing become a physical thing so having yeah. having something that that basically is a representation of what it physically looks of what it, the screen print will be in you know for, i suppose an effigy of because it will never it will it'll never be quite as good as as, as the as the as the real mccoy you know that you've got there but but getting wow. that that but getting that but getting to that point where you've got something so tangible so much sooner in the process do you get what i mean is that yeah, is yeah. that is that it's, also yes. sort of a yeah. Do you feel like you've actualized the, the artwork and yes. so you, you feel fulfill, you get, you're yes. fulfilled earlier, I guess? Yes, I, I'm, fulfill, I'm fulfilled through the whole process. Um, and that's really important. That's the, that's the mental health aspect I was talking about before. Yeah. That, you know, once I understood that making art was critical to keeping me sane, um, I also understood which, how I have to do it in order to get the most of that. And, sure. Um, it's great. Awesome. Um, there's yeah, some, we've then, got someone asking, just so you know, uh, is there a possibility to have Arthur and the Black Toad printed? That would be There incredible. is a possibility. The more times, and I hope this is a different person than has previously asked. Hugo Barra. The more, time, the more time people ask, the better the chances get. It's, it's uh, Hugo I, Barra. I think he's asked me before. <laughs> <laughs> if other people want Arthur and the Black Toad printed, put it in the comments and it'll compel uh, Pete to do uh, yeah. that. Yeah, the more people ask, the more likely it is because I think that's one I'd have to release myself and it would need to be... I just want to have some kind of idea that it's that it's going to be uh, economically feasible. But yeah, I'd love to. I can show the original of that one too, just real quick. I'm sure Hugo would love that. If I'm saying your name wrong, I apologize. I can't, I can't tell if it's Ugo or Hugo. Wow, 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 wow. That is incredible. Now this one uh, is not drawn from me. This is a much more manly fellow than myself. But I've got a little, I've got made a little clay mock-up of his face uh, that I used to draw from. Uh, and there's the pencils for that are in here, just a second. Like I say, you, you've got a, you've got more. To, so you're actually at the quarter two mark, but because you haven't got a session straight after you, you're okay. you're free to you're free to to, to to sort of keep going for a while. I am just about done anyway. I, I was going to show the pencils for that, but I can't find it at the moment. Okay. Well, we can share them if you wanted to take photos of them. We can always share them on our Twitter and stuff if you want to do that. That's always a thing. There's on my Instagram the pencils are up, and I, I actually uh, on my Facebook group the pencils for that image are available as a coloring page if you're into that kind of thing. Uh, yeah, so this is this is how it comes out in the end, and Black Dragon Press absolutely nailed this. The, the, this, this is, is a, awesome. The print quality on this, which is a gicle, is is just. I mean, I don't like to toot my own horn, but it's not me who made the print. So, it's, yeah, it's gorgeous though. The colors, the colors positively just glow, and yeah, it's. I, I'm really, really happy with how this came out, and you know. You were saying that it, it's never quite as good as the original, and I, I don't think that's really the case. I think that um, I, 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 I just meant as in the in its own way. Yeah, and neither neither can replace the other, and I like no. that all the more. But I just meant as in that that actualization point. You know that, that you yeah. get to yeah. to the moment that you would have if you you know you had the screen print, but you might get to that point, you know, two years earlier because you've painted it first. Um, that's right. Uh, we've got we have got some people coming in saying that they're in. So we've got David T Teniente uh, saying in Stacey Langdown. Oh yeah, I'd definitely buy. And uh, Matt Griffin hashtag release the Arthur and the Black Toad cut uh, is is what he's put. And uh, and people are saying wow about that drawing. And uh, sorry about the um, about the print. I keep saying drawing. Sorry, uh, but uh, yeah about that 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 screen print. It is. It, sorry, the G Clay is uh, it is incredible. Um, yeah, you really got to see it. It's uh, it's it's 
well worth it. It's a beautiful, beautiful print. Um, yeah, I figured I would show some of the stuff that I'm going to make available at awesome. the end of the yeah. live stream. Um, first of all, it's a print. So this is this is this one here is a gicle. Uh This is the. <laughs> Yeah, we, we love this, by the way. We love this so much. We just went. <gasps> <laughs> so this isn't the screen print itself, uh, but I've, I just saw the photos today and the photos of the actual screen printer are, are going to be on the listing when I put it up on my store. But yeah, this is printed by White Duck. They outdid themselves. Um, this was originally an editorial piece for GQ Germany. Mm -hmm. uh, they did an, art, an article about... Um, ayahuasca ceremonies in Berlin, like the urban ayahuasca ceremonies. So it's like a businessman having his mind reconstructed. And yeah, this was like, that, <laughs> that's a dream job in terms of editorial. You know, sometimes people call you and say like, we've got this article about the economic situation in China or <laughs> something. And, and you think, yeah. okay. Okay, great. I've got this piece. Uh, I've got this idea. It's going to have like, uh, there's going to be brains falling out in this sort of, uh, this sort of tie dye pattern. And there's going to be yeah. eyeballs everywhere. How, how does that? that, that... <laughs> no, there, there are editorial illustrators who make magic with that kind of. Freak. No, I agree. Magic. I'm not one of those people, but. You know, uh, Yana, uh, the art director, called me with this, and I just thought, oh, you understand me. <laughs> <laughs> and, yeah, this was a hell of a lot of fun. And uh, there's going to be a variant on on this stuff. The uh, We've dropped out the glasses for the foil variant. So this this bit in here is, uh, is rainbow foil, and I think that's going to look really slick. Yeah. The other thing that I'm putting up is the original from the Ninja Turtles release from last week. Jeepers. That's nice. Do you have any sketches from the... I, I thought while I'm here, and I, and I don't know if you'd have these to hand, but do, do you have any sort of, of the, the, the preliminary stuff for either that or, or, uh, or Watchmen that you could perhaps show us? Yep. Yeah, I think I do. Just, I think it's actually in this. I think it's the next thing right after Gawain, actually. What in the images so, that we've got, or oh, oh, no, you've got here? In yeah. in my sketchbook, yeah. yeah. Um, so you know, I just took some notes about you know why did I want to do Ninja Turtles? What what is the idea here? And I pitched them a couple things. One, I pitched them. I pitched them this, which was all of the turtles in one picture, with a similar kind of kinetic idea to the uh, Sleepy Hollow print that I did. Um, and the other idea was to have, uh, you can't really tell, but I was starting to do some Raphael sketches and I wanted to do one of those like Kuniyoshi style warrior prints like I did. That's what we actually released, but I wanted to do one for each turtle fighting a different bad guy. Uh, I briefly considered putting New York buildings in it, and then I thought, no, I don't do buildings. <laughs> Maybe, perhaps, yeah, uh, perhaps you in a collab with uh, with uh, with Raid Seventy One then for buildings. Oh yeah, he, he would, yeah, <laughs> he, he would nail that. Yeah. <laughs> so I wanted to draw foot soldiers. I didn't get to draw foot soldiers, but I love the foot soldiers. Ne never say never. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I don't think the series is going to happen. But okay. uh, yeah, and then that's the there was a there was a portrait orientation version of that scene but we went landscape which i think was the right call and uh yeah then there's watchmen as well as the next one there's not much to look at there though i i pretty much landed on that solution right away Ta -da. <laughs> and uh yeah i didn't need to mess with it anymore but. well if we if we open it up to a few questions now I, i'm gonna uh then um and 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 then we'll um yeah we'll 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 uh we'll We'll end it there, I think. So we'll so we'll open up some questions. So people, put your questions in the comments while you're while while you can. Um, and uh, and yeah, so Pete, this is this has been awesome. Um, you know, as I, as I said at the start of the, um, I think we we're saying it off camera, but today's quite different. To, and it wasn't deliberate, but today is quite different to yesterday in that that there's. Um, some quite dynamic things going on. You know, we've got sketching, we've got this, and you mentioned Cintiq. We've got ne the next session is in fact um, is in fact Dolly uh, sketching oh, a, uh, a a loved Marvel character into a Cintiq, and we'll do full rendering. Nice. Um, nice. 
um so uh so yeah that's going to be cool but it's just you know it's so different this is very mixed up and you know i, I think i hope that these um because people can watch these afterwards that um that people can you know there's a lot of cool things to see and a lot of information here that, that we're getting at that, that we're getting out of these different sessions but uh stacy langdown asks what other films do you love that you'd like to do a piece for well uh any ones that don't breach ndas would be great oh <laughs> yeah no no, no. I, don't, I don't have a lot of that uh situation right now um one of my like my favorite movies i don't know if they're really the best movies uh I love Shadow of the Vampire. I think Not that what I'm is... familiar with. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> it's, it's Willem Dafoe as. Oh, cool! Uh, and it's 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 this kind of meta thing where it's like they're remaking the filming of Nosferatu, the original, but mm-hmm. the character who was Max Schreck, who was played Nosferatu in the film, the conceit of this movie, Shadow of the Vampire, is that he actually was a vampire. <laughs> and Willem Dafoe plays him, and it's it's such a, a clever idea. It has such a sense of humor, and it is. Um, there's a scene where Willem Dafoe bites the head off a bat, and it's just it's genius. I think I would love a chance to do that. I don't think anybody ends up buying that poster. But, but I think um, I think just on the just at, you mentioned Willem Dafoe, and I and just thinking about the way you render images, you know, I just think that you could do an awesome Willem Dafoe for some reason. I don't know why, but so maybe you've already, there maybe there's already a sketch in your head. Forehead brothers, forehead bros. <laughs> yeah, I understand him somehow on that level. Um, yeah, I, so that's one I'd love to do. Uh, but there's, yeah, I mean, there's loads. Uh, any more Any more questions, guys? Feel free to, for, to get them in. I think if we go to it for another sort of, it's, you know, it's almost three now. So if we say something like, oh, see, it's not almost three where you are. Um, but uh, we've got, we got sort of, uh, you know, we go for another five minutes and that just means that people can ask some questions if they'd like to now is your chance guys um to to actually hear him say it rather than type it in in a comment in a, in a facebook group so not that there's any wrong thing wrong with that and then when artists do that it's it's, it's great you know to, to be so responsive and interactive with your with your community and stuff um um yeah so um anything anything that you've got coming up that somebody did ask about a bottleneck said it i'd love to see hear hear about i don't think he asked for a tease but we don't have a tease to give you if you did want to pick tease because we, we don't know about it but somebody asked about a bng piece that you've got in october there it is max b eager to see what pete is preparing for bng in october is that gonna have something to do with a comic-con by any chance i don't believe i am preparing anything for bng in october okay so you heard it here <laughs> first guys um max p unfortunately the piece that you think is happening is 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 not a thing and you've got incredible I mean, information every everything that i that i've been discussing with with bng so far none of it has had a, a timetable on it okay no. so the, maybe there's there's stuff from higher up in the in in bng hq that that you just yeah. haven't heard about maybe a drop they date have plans for me that i that i don't know about yet <laughs> um yeah there, there is one thing that's under discussion that i could conceive of somehow being misinterpreted as that, uh, but okay. I'm not going to talk about it. No, 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 no. Um, as far as like giving giving a forecast, what I'm really looking forward to getting my teeth back into is doing another Fritz Lang poster for um, Black Dragon Press. I, you know, he he. Bra- Black they, Dragon Press. Black Dragon Press. Uh, Black Dragon Press. Come on the show. Sorry, just just yeah. to say. Sorry, I love. I, I I'm a huge Black Dragon Press booster, uh, and yeah, we're. I, there's no timeline on that either. Uh, he just knows that I'm I'm going to get to it once I'm able to, and I'm really looking forward to doing that again. Um, yeah, and I've I've got I've got personal stuff. I'll give you a tease of another Arthur piece that I've done, and the reason I'm doing all these King Arthur pieces I'm not yet able to reveal, but someday. Uh, this one hasn't, I haven't finished the colors yet, but this is Arthur in the snow fighting a giant snake. Wow. So is that for you? So is that, you know, you were talking about things that are, are basically the, the point where it's like, it's that, and then it's basically the print afterwards. Is is that where we're at with that one? Uh, you know, the pieces you've showed us where you've got, given us the full painting, where you've shown us the full painting. Is that where we're at with that, that piece just, that you've just shown yeah. us? 
Yeah, that's there's also a like there's a Photoshop file of that one that's almost finished. Almost, okay. Almost all the colors are sorted, but there's some details to fix and and whatnot. Um, but I'll be putting that out at some point. Cool. So I'm gonna get so there's some cool questions coming through. So I'm gonna I'm gonna put them to you. Uh, Ian Fraser asks, are there any other classic st series or stories that would uh, that you would like to visit? For example, the 1500s Chinese novel, uh, Journey to the West. Uh, that is the basis for the TV show Monkey. Just thinking of those characters and the colors. I, I'm not familiar with that one specifically. I thought he was going to mention the Heroes of the Water Margin, um, which is something that um, Kuniyoshi did, which I love. I don't know that one, um, but that sounds amazing. That sounds like something I would absolutely be all over. Um, but are there, any, are there any stories that you actually want to visit? Classic. Yeah, uh, yeah, sure. Um, I mean, I'd like to, it, it sounds like a cop-out because we just talked about it, but I'd actually <laughs> like to do a, a, a fully illustrated edition of Gawain and the Green Knight um, to, to do an actual book of it, which isn't impossible. I have been talking to someone about that, and that may happen. Have you ever uh, spoken to uh, Jonathan Burton? Because obviously he's done Game of Thrones fully illustrated. Yeah, well, I, I, I love what, what Jonathan does. And I his his that stuff for, for, that book, for, that, for that series is incredible. Yeah, um, he's done a lot of great work for, for Folio. Has Pete just been reminded of some homework he needed to do? I don't know what, at what moment that, that was. There must have been some twig in the face, perhaps. Like, I don't know. where. It, um, uh, what else have we got here? Um, BDP is the best stuff from Alan Campbell. It's a Black Dragon Press. Yeah, um, Black Dragon. Uh, Jasper Capenhead. With all the Metropolis posters, it must be hard to bring something new to it. Yeah, um, Metropolis, we're gonna do Metropolis, um, not yet. That one is, yeah, that's gonna be really hard to tackle. Um, yeah, it's tricky. It's just, so many have been done and they've mostly been really excellent. I can't really think there of are a some lot great, of I mean, the original, I mean, the original poster feels like an AMP almost. Do you get what I mean? Like when you look yeah. back at it, it, I mean, you look at it and it feels like a screen print because it's so just the way the colors are there um, and stuff. Yeah. Um, um, the, the, the way I think that generally the way to bring something new to any property is to really focus on, on your own experience of it. Right. And, and usually that's, that's what my, my designs usually do. It's rare that my, approach to to a print is that i'm trying to summarize the film or the story for everyone mm -hmm. you know th th there was a quote that i i heard it was feedback on a mondo poster that didn't happen and i can't remember who the artist was but the feedback from the studio was if you were going to boil down the film to one scene it wouldn't be that and that is indicative to me of a certain approach to trying to do a where it's really about it being a poster advertising a movie, right? Yeah. But for me, it's more of a print to hang on your wall. And my, my view is I want to interpret the film and talk back to it. So as long as you have a rich experience of the film and understanding that every human brain is different, if you're able to focus on that, you can almost always bring something that is in a little or big way different than what's been done before that chimes in really nicely and unfortunately you you, you were obviously uh, we're, we're very grateful to have the time that you have because i know that your time is is, is precious uh, um but uh it's something that was that touches on something that was said in the in the panel yesterday uh matt Ferg, when we were discussing what is an alternative movie poster and he said yeah you know yeah, you, you, you watched it back and he was saying you know um about it's you know it's 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 the narrative that that the artist brings and it's a self-guided thing that's why what makes an alternative movie poster it's the artist's own vision of what that film means to them and you know or what they or the way that they might express the ideas exactly. that of a film that's coming out and so exactly. i think that yeah. chimes in completely you know i think those coalesce with the, with what you've just said so perfectly um just a couple more uh questions here um would you consider doing uh some dirk gently or hitchhiker's guide that uh, guide to the galaxy that comes from Catherine mcclackland hitchhiker's guide to the galaxy obviously incredible yes uh. i i mean i adore all that material um my initial instinct is that i don't know if i would do it well um but i could be wrong about that i you know not everything about my work is necessarily clear to me myself 
but if I had the chance to, yeah, absolutely. No, no doubt. I mean, I, I love, I love that material. I've loved it since I was a kid. Um, Jonathan Burton has kind of done amazing stuff with it already. Uh, I, I don't think he did any of the Dirk Gently, but he did do Hitchhiker's Guide. Um, but yeah, I mean, that would, uh, that'd be a blast for sure. Okay, well, thank you so much. Uh, I think that's that's all the questions that we've got. Ian Fraser just telling you basically what Monkey is. Uh, yes, it was a huge show on uh, on UK TV in the late seventies. Um, yeah, I'm going to look into that. It sounds really interesting. It, it involves a, a main character with with big sideburns. Um, if, from if memory serves, uh, I mean, I wasn't alive in the seventies, but if memory serves. Um, so yeah, thank you so much. For this. Thank you. Um, obviously, we, you've got uh, those prints that you've shown us, and also the also the original. Uh, someone was ISO money to in order to buy that uh, t- okay. <laughs> Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtle. Yeah, I hear you. Yeah, I hear you. I, yeah, yeah. We're all ISO money. That's why I'm selling it, right? ISO. That's why. He's, yeah, he's ISO money too. Um, so uh, yeah, uh, thank you so much, and um, thank you. Uh, you've, it's, it's, as I say, it's been a great session, and uh, and people can watch it back, uh, which is which is great, and obviously you can share it around and stuff. Um, yeah, so you've got your two prints going up in the in the store, and yeah, and they're on. What's the URL again? We'll we'll post uh, it around. We'll post it yeah. out. But what's the Peter URL? Diamond, Peter Diamond. Peter Diamond. Ca. 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 Like Canada, and uh, the link to the shops right there. Awesome, and um, yeah. So, guys, we've uh, we're, we're going to go for a, we've got a couple of hours break now, which is the longest break we've had uh, during this entire convention. Um, so, this is a luxury. Enjoy it. Garrett, thank you, thank you for for doing all this. Yeah, <laughs> thank you. It's amazing. Everybody appreciates it. I don't know if everybody said There's, so. We've had a lot of it's been, we've had a lot of love, and it's 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 been very um it's uh and it's very touching. As well, I know you're you're off screen there, but key yes key key come in the come in the shot a second. Yes, thank yes, you. This is Karina. This is Karina. Um, and uh, uh, she's only b- slowly being introduced to the poster community and the art community uh, that, that is, you know, alternative movie posters and stuff. But um, but she's uh, she's doing great, and uh, she's an artist in her own right. So hopefully we'll see some stuff from her in the groups and stuff. Anyway, um, so yeah, it's uh, it's the uh, our Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram are all at AmpJamCon, and we are back in one hour fifty six minutes. For um, for Dolly doing some uh, doing some awesome. live drawing into a Cintiq, uh, it's going to be super cool. So uh, yeah, uh, we'll see you soon.